All right, everybody, this is the Crossman Icon, which is basically the very first Crossman PCP. Now, there's been plenty of Benjamin PCPs, but this is the first PCP rifle with the Crossman name on it. So, let's just get out of this package and check it out. This is an entry-level PCP coming in at just $279, and I would put it in the TAC driver category. It's that accurate. All right. It's well protected. It's got styrofoam in there, holding everything where it should be. Nice, nice thick instruction manual, and literally a bag of goodies. Got one magazine in there, 10 shots. Holy crap, this is a really awesome gun, you guys. I seriously love the design on it. So just unwrapping it from the plastic, I was like, oh yeah. So check out this noise. You got your manometer right under there. We'll get a better look at that in a second. Fiber optic front sight. There's your air reservoir. Nice adjustable rear sight. Great styling. And that's a two-stage adjustable trigger. What's your safety? You flick it forward. We got bolt action. Dove's tail on top. Boy, this really is a good looking gun, you guys. Definitely tacked to cool. The cheek piece actually does not go up and down, although it looks like it does. Like I said, this is an entry-level PCP. It's only going to cost you around $279 right now. But it's packed with features including a one-half UNF threaded muzzle. So, I'm loving this gun. And I haven't even shot it yet. You guys, this shoulder so well. And that sight picture is just awesome. Hard to get both of them to focus. Your fiber optic dot just fits perfectly right in that notch. So I don't see how you're gonna miss with this gun, seriously. Rear sights are adjustable for windage and elevation, if I didn't already say that. Check out this bud pad right there, you guys. Soft rubber. I didn't shoot it with open sights in this video because I wanted to concentrate on some precision shooting with my scope. You guys, I am gonna run a patch through this. All new air guns and firearms have preservative gunk in the barrel here so you got to clean that out before you shoot your air gun whether you bought it at Walmart or like air guns of Arizona they are they're all the same they got motor oil literally motor oil inside that barrel right now look at that fancy cute bolt right there stylish it's all rounded off looks pretty comfortable all right so it tells you fire and safe right there on your Marauder style safety go like that when you're ready to fire. So when you cock it, it locks back like that in the notch. Load your single shot or magazine. You put it forward like that, you're ready to fire. Two stage, it says this thing is, so let's see. Oh yeah. So a two stage trigger, when you go like this, it returns back. A single stage, you pull it halfway, it's gonna stay halfway. So there's the first stage. Nice, I can feel that it's not super powerful. So we're gonna start with some of the lightest pellets. Do an accuracy test. And here's a look at that styling. You got your manometer down there. And uh, let's just check out this end. There's your sight right there. Is that a screw or, oh yeah, it just pops off. And there's your 1 8 quick disconnect foster fitting. So no fill probe required. That's awesome, that just pops back on. And of course, we're going to put my Donnie FL 2.0 on there. Boom. One half UNF. Incidentally, any of you newbies, you got to use ballast all. That's safe for air gun seals. That's what a crown saver looks like. Okay, more about that in a second. And here's the first patch. Pulled a couple times. And you're never going to get your air gun completely clean unless you... I don't know what the stuff is. You got to put some stuff in it, soak it overnight, and then clean that out with another thing. But this is good enough. And the reason you use a crown saver is because this right here is the crown, the very end of your barrel. And although it doesn't look like much, it's actually the most important part of your entire barrel. Once you put even a scratch on this, like if you put a metal cleaning rod down it, you're done. Game over for your gun. I got to give a shout out to Air Venturi for loaning me this Nomad compressor. It is just really made Airgun Channel possible because I broke so many of those young hangs and stuff, I said, forget it, I'll just quit Airgun Channel. But then I 
basically said something like that to Air Venturi and they're like, all right, we'll send you one. So right here, we're just gonna pop this off. Boom. And then this is a good gun for, well, it's an entry level PCP, so this little teeny tube right here, you can fill it with a hand pump easily. So you can get a hand pump to charge this gun, literally $40. Boom. So I'm just gonna set my auto shut off to a very special 3000 PSI. All right. I love guns that run off 200 bar because they shoot exactly the same as 300 bar guns. But when you go to fill it from a scuba tank, let's say, you got 4,500 PSI in your scuba tank, you can fill a 300 bar gun, which is 4,500 PSI, one, maybe two, three times. But you can fill your 200 bar gun up from that same scuba tank. I really have no idea, but I'm gonna guess between 50 and 100 times. The other thing is when you're using a hand pump, it might take you 30 or 40 pumps to fill the cylinder up. But topping off like a 480 cc cylinder, unless you're under 25 years old, you know, your arm could literally fall off. All right, this stupid ass bipod is like, this is as tall as it goes. So <laughs> here's a sound test. All right, this is a 14.35 grain, full tank. That does have a little bit of bark. 82 decibels is like medium loud, so if you're trying to be uh, on the down low, yeah, grab an LDC for this bad boy. This gun comes in 177 or 22 caliber. The 177 is gonna hold 12 rounds in the magazine with a max velocity of 1,000 feet per second. You're gonna see this 22 pushes pellets from 13 to 18 grains between 912 and 850 feet per second. So it's got plenty of power. All right, once again, I'm working with the mini tripod here, so let's do some chronograph speeds. All right, this is the lightest pellet, 13.43. Rally sport. Boy, a lot of these are bent up. Pretty freaking good. 912 feet per second, that's not, that's not slow at all. All right, these are the recommended pellet, 14.35 grain. Almost exactly the same, you guys, at 909 feet per second. That's freaking nice. All right, I'm gonna see how the 16 grains do. All right, 15.89 grain, Hades. 870. 15.89 grain, JSB. Nice, 875. And now the finest pellets, 16 grain FX. 863 so I don't think this gun lacks power at all I think this gun you just can't shoot heavy ammo out of it let's do 18 grain real fast look at these beauties you guys these are so much smaller than the pellets that I normally use actually really cute all right guys FX 18 grain here we go 820 Crossman actually tuned this gun so that it just shoots all ammo perfectly it's gonna shoot your light JSB ammo all the way up to 18.1 grain with no problems at all. And I did not test the heavy stuff, but I did shoot this gun at 25 yards, 35 yards, and 50 yards in this video. 25 yards, wow, nailed it. All right, we got a shadowy deal going on here, but it's time to party. We're starting off with a 14.35 grain JSBs. All right, we're sighting in, we're overexposed, but there's no going back now. All righty, Roo. All right, we're gonna shoot a group. This might not be the pellet for the gun. Walking it in, as they say. And you know what? It's because we're at 25 yards. The closer you are, the more clicks you have to do. Let's do the five shot group right here. Same hole in it. Nice. 
How you like that? Very good. All right, so I'm gonna go one click to the left. I think that was two clicks up, and it looks like these 14.35s are doing just fine. Darn, the wind just came up, and I think that these pelts are gonna blow around more. God, that's pretty awesome though. Thing is, we're right at 25 yards, so I can't just go to town, and plus it's, we're overexposed. There we go. If it looked like that the whole time, it'd be great. Oh, here comes the wind, so I'm gonna cheat over that way. Oh. I hate it when I cheat over and it goes where I was aiming. That's what I should have done. So you guys, these are all my pellets. So, so I usually organize them. Um, that's like 3, 5, 30, 25 maybe. And then these are all 22s down to the crossments to the good stuff. But anyway, <laughs> then I take them out and in and they all get, you know, you know, the, you know the drill. So I haven't got to use my lightweight 20. Oh, that's 177. I haven't got to use my lightweight 20 twos in a long time but i have every 22 on in stock at least two cans of everything um and so we're gonna go for the 13.73s i believe and in here somewhere there's some 14.35 jsbs and then surprise surprise i have 15.89 jsbs and 15.89 fx baby this gun weighs 7.1 pounds and ar-15 weighs i believe 7.4 pounds all right we're at a very special Barrel length is 21 inches with an overall length of 38.5 inches. 32 yards away. Close enough. I don't know what's in my gun. Okay, we're only shooting for group right now and we are going to try the 18 grain FX first. Now I'm gonna hit really low. I'm just gonna aim right at this dot right here. Oh, I thought I was going to hit low. Guess not. Darn it. We still got a dime-sized group, but it's just not through the same hole. So, that's not really not a flyer, but you can call it one. Or it could have been me. You know, I could have screwed that one up. Anyway, so... Let's do another group with these 18 grains because 18 grains are what you want to shoot. Actually, I'm doing pretty good. So actually, let me try to side over there. I didn't expect these to be the, I don't know. I just got the impression you had to shoot light ammo with this gun, but I guess you don't. We got some big time wind right now. Pretty good. I'm gonna put those away and we're gonna try some 16 grain. <laughs> Alrighty, Rude. I forgot these, a lot of these were flying about close to the same. FES, let's do a group right here. Okay, here comes big old breeze. That's a dime right there, and you know, it's not through the exact same hole, but shoot, you guys, this gun cost. Sweet, that was 16 grain. That's pretty awesome right there. All right, so let's go to the 16 grain reds. Wow, and then we're gonna have 16 grain Hades. Whoa, these are quite a bit faster. But we're shooting groups, so I just gotta keep aiming at the same spot. Ooh, these might be a little too fast. 
Well, let's just sight in. Five shot group of JSP Reds. Here we go. So, you guys, I'm not sighting in at all. We're just going for groups, so. All right, you guys, and that was my best group because I could tell I was shooting well. I was um, shooting like I used to shoot where I really, really concentrate on having my crosshairs on the target after I hit it. So, nice. That's our best group yet. That's a one whole dime right there. All right, so that was 15.89 grain reds. Let's do some Hades. So far, you guys, this is keeping all ammo within a dime. All right, it's breeze time. Now I want to ruin my nice group right there. My sighting in target now. Yeah, I'd say probably no on the Hades. That's the only pellet that this gun isn't liking so far. And 13.43 grain. I kept saying 7.3, but it's 13.43 grain. These are the actual lightest JSP pellets I got on hand, almost, besides wad cutters. All right, let's see where we're hitting. This guy's lungs all jacked up. I couldn't see nothing. I should probably go fill up pretty soon. Expecting this gun to, like, shoot for the rest of its life. Whoa. Yeah, you know what's happening? It wasn't the Hades. I'm out of air, so let me go fill back up. So I'm about to refill, and I guess I'm around 15, 1600. All right, back at it. All right, back up at a full tank. I'm gonna try some more Hades, because I think that's where we were running out of air right there. Let's see how they do. That's what I thought. So our point of impact is over a little bit, but look, the Hades are holding a dime-sized group as well. Very nice. So, so far, every single ammo has a dime-sized group. All right, we're gonna end on the 14.35s, but we're skipping to the lightest ammo of all, which is the 13.43. JSB. My dog walks right past my target. All right, let's just use this one to sight in on. Close enough. Let's go up here and do a group. All right, well, this is a lot of bent pellets in here. So 13.73. Probably, I think the wind was blowing before and it just stopped. Yep. 13.43 JSB, official group. Oh, that one was me, darn it. But I was just about to say, uh, Crossman's made this gun, tuned this gun to shoot every single pellet perfectly. Everything between 13 to 18 grain. All right, 14.35 grain. We'll see if we can get our best group. And you know, I'm not shooting perfect today, so at least a few of those errors on my part. On my part. Okay, let's see where we're gonna hit though. About the same spot, so I'm gonna take a few more clicks over. Three clicks over, and I think we're about the right height. We had a, our first flyer, I think, in about probably 30 shots. That's our first flyer. Ooh, look at that. Same thing, a consistent dime. And then I had a fly fly, so uh, that's awesome. So that's pretty much sighted in. I'm gonna shoot three shot groups. Rest of these bullseyes. I, so I think the two best groups are either the 15.89 grain JSB or the FX 16 grain. So here's a 15.89 grain JSB. I'm gonna sight in, take care of the rest of these bullseyes. That was 
three. All right, you guys, I think that is the pellet for this gun, the 15.89 grain JSB. I just same hold it five through the same hole. I mean, that's what it looks like from here. It's probably two holes, but close enough. So there's no apparent way to remove this sight so I can get my scope on there. But no, first I'm gonna take that top thing off, see what happens. Okay, so I went ahead and unscrewed this all the way. And then underneath it, Boom, that opens up and there's a couple screws right there. So that's how you get your sight off. This is actually not attached though, so don't lose those pieces. After you take it off, you probably want to put it back together. My dog's looking over there because like I shoot air guns for fun on Saturdays. And then my neighbor, he does yard work for fun. And we try to line the times up so that he has his, uh, small engines going um, corresponding with the time that I'm filming the video and then I'll go in and he'll go in so today we're scheduled for a nine o'clock and he's right on schedule but you guys it's gonna take more than the roar of a small engine to stop me from doing a trigger pull test all right so here's that trigger First stage. All right, we got some wind, but this should be about 50 yards. All right, we're set up at 45 yards away. Close enough. Oh, parallax on 50. There we go. I right, need to go low. Wow, that's a bent pellet right there. <laughs> oh, smack that guy. 14.5, here we go. Yeah, that's more like it. And they sight themselves in too, so I'm, I'm happy. All right, you guys, let's go on the X, 10X target. I'm going to click up a little bit, pull the impact up. It's really hard to aim at because I got that black line going through it, so I'm going to skip that one. Call that a bullseye too. I think I need to be on 12 power. Yeah, that's more like it. Bullet impact right. Hmm. Fly, fly. It's a fly, 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 fly. Yeah, I'm loading. That was a bent pillow right there. I mean, I saw that it was bent when it was going in, so. Nice. Bullet pack down. One click. This gun has just the, it's just loud enough to be like kind of fun, but then like not too loud to like piss your neighbors off. So this is holding dime-sized, nickel-sized groups at just about 50 yards. And that's why I put it in the tack driver category because overall, it's super reliable and it only gets a fire maybe two out of every 100 shots. So I like it. This right here is a random shot string. I believe it was the 14.35 JSBs. It's not even the whole shot string. 
either, but basically it starts out and the changes in velocity are so gradual that it doesn't affect your point of impact at all. This gun hits in the exact same spot through the entire shot string and then all of a sudden it'll just throw a wild one and then two more wild ones after that and you know it's time to refill. But it's going to shoot perfectly right up until the point that it doesn't. So obviously you can figure out exactly how many shots that was. It might even be different for different pellets. So I'd say Crossman did an excellent job on this gun. I love the fact that you can shoot any pellet with it. It's got plenty of power, easy to fill, and it's good looking too. There will be a link in the description if you guys want to buy this. Pyramid Air, Air Gun Depot, and I'll make 5%. Alright everybody, I appreciate you tuning in. Happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.